In this video, we will be looking at exam questions around always, sometimes or never true. It is tricky and it's practice and it will vary depending upon the type of question you are looking at. Um, but for some general tips, if you look at the question and you think that it is sometimes true, you must give an example of where it is not true and an example of where it is true. And then you must state, therefore, it is sometimes true. Uh, just as a tip on picking up marks, do give the example of where it is not true first. OK, that's the method mark comes from, for some reason, the example of where it is not true first. For always, um, you can't just state because it is um, or just give loads of examples and say it's true for these four or five examples. Therefore, it's always true. You need robust logical argument or more, more usually algebraic deduction and the same for never. OK, um, sometimes you might be able to use proof by contradiction for always or never true. Um, that's generally a bit more tricky. Uh, that, that style of proof and if you are required to use it the question will normally lead you to use that proof by contradiction so here if you think it's always or never generally go to an algebraic argument um, to, to support your work in this video then we're going to look at all of these statements and how we might answer them and some pitfalls that you might get so we'll take each one of these in turn So in this statement, we're looking all prime numbers are odd, always true, sometimes or never. Um, well, in fact, um, we know that two is prime and two is even. Therefore, statement is not true. It's not true that all prime numbers are odd. Um, you could clarify here. I guess this one's a little poorly worded. Um, I, I would probably head, uh, clarify and say prime numbers are sometimes odd and sometimes even. And then give some examples, e.g. 3, 5, 7 and sometimes even 2. OK. Next question, always true, sometimes true or never true. Now here we have a quadratic inequality. So we're looking at what do we normally do with quadratic inequalities? Well, let's consider x squared plus three um, uh, greater than six x. If we do what we normally do with quadratics and we take everything to one side, x squared minus six x plus three, uh, we're trying to find if that's greater than or zero. So let's just consider the left hand side of this. And what we normally do is we complete the square and then we can make some kind of deduction around that. So if I uh, complete the square on that, x minus three all squared, take away nine and then add three. So that is equal to x minus 3 all squared minus 6. Now, um, this is always positive, greater than or equal to 0. Um, and so this is going to be, I can see now that um, this whole thing is going to be sometimes positive and sometimes negative. So now I can give some examples. So let's have a look at where it is. It's going to be not true. Uh, this is not going to be true when x minus three squared is less than six. So we could um, take, uh, let's say, when x um, uh, let x equal three, and we can evaluate that left hand side and right hand side. We'll get three squared plus three equals 12 um, and 6 times 3 equals 18. Uh, 12 is greater than 18 is not true. And then let's consider uh, when x equals, um, let's say, 3. Uh, sorry, let's say 6. On the left hand side, we'll get 6 squared plus 3 
equals 39. On the right hand side, 6 times 6 equals 36. So we've got 39 is greater than 36, and that is true. So therefore, uh, sometimes the statement above is true. But what I've done is my algebra to kind of um, support my thinking and my choice of examples. Now, hopefully here you know that this uh, next statement, product of two odd numbers is even, is false. Um, you could do a couple of quick checks. Three times five, two odd numbers is 15 is odd. Seven times three, also odd. Um, and we know, we should know, odd times odd is odd. Um, so we're starting from a basis of knowing it, but we need to give reasons. So um, let 2n plus 1 be an odd number. Um, so we've got n belongs to um, integers. And uh, 2m plus 1 be another odd number, a different odd number. If I then multiply these out, 2n plus 1 times 2m plus 1, get 4nm plus 2n plus 2m plus 1. Factorise out a 2 from the first three terms. And then I've shown, therefore, I can just state there which is odd. I've got a multiple of 2, which is even, and add 1, so by definition that is odd. Um, make a statement then, therefore, um, product of two odd numbers um, is, uh, is even, that statement is never true. Okay, um, mistakes that you might make, be careful, would be if you did an argument where you did 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 and made a conclusion from that. Here you're not doing any two general odd numbers, you're doing a particular odd number squared. So an odd number squared times itself. So that is not as general as the one above, we can't use that. The other mistake people make is to use 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 3 as two general odd numbers. Again, this is a bit, this isn't as general as the one above that I've done. This would be two consecutive odd numbers. So again, you wouldn't get full marks for that. Um, because it's not as general as any old two odd numbers. In this one, the sum of three consecutive integers is divisible by three. Pause the video, have a go, see how you would answer it. What you might do, um, just some jottings to get it in your head, three consecutive integers, let's say uh, four plus five plus six, that adds up to 15, which is divisible by 3. You might do uh, 7 plus 8 plus 9, adds up to 24, divisible by 3. That doesn't get you any marks at all, but it might help uh, just clear in your head what you're looking at. It might be that, um, so certainly here we might think that it is sometimes true or it's always true. We can cross out never true. Um, so how could we potentially show whether it is always true or not? we would want to go to our algebra. So consecutive integers, so we could say let n, n plus one, n plus two, be three consecutive integers. And then we just do a simple algebra, add them up, n plus n plus one, plus n plus two, would be three n plus three, and then factorise out that 3, and we can then state which is always divisible by 3, because it's a multiple of 3. Um, therefore, it's always true.
let's have a look at the next one so pause this video and have a go at it see what you come up with it might be that the first thing you do is just put a few uh, numbers in um, and see what it looks like so 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 is 22 well that's not divisible by 4 so I can start off by saying well it can't always be true I might try another one um, 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 uh, it gives me 26 that's also not divisible by 4 um, might be able to spot uh, what's going on here uh, 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 I've added another one to each of those that's going to be 30 not divisible um, by 4 um, potentially any 4 that I add up any 4 integers I'm just going to be a multiple of 4 ahead of these 4 that I've chosen so it looks like it's probably never true um, let's see if we can prove it algebraically though so if we start off with n uh, so consider it's always a good word to use consider n um, n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 uh, there, there's my four consecutive integers so if I add them together the sum of those n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3 would be 4n plus 6 if I now factorize out 4 I can write this as 4 times n plus 1 plus 2 and I can see from here that this is um, always a multiple, so always two more than a multiple of four. Um, and therefore, it's actually never, uh, never true. Um, it will never be divisible by four. Okay, this one, the product of two different irrational numbers is irrational. So here, just try a few things out, um, find two different irrational numbers. Uh, and we can see, let's say root two times root three um, is root six, which is irrational. So that works, uh, so that, that gives me an irrational number. Um, I want to choose two different irrational numbers that potentially um, rationalize so if I chose root 2 I can't choose root 4 because that is that is rational but if I chose root 8 well that would be root 16 which is 4 and rational so I've got my two examples um, I can say sometimes true find my case where it is not true first of all and that is um, root 2 and root 8 the product is rational and uh, where it is true root 2 and root 3 and this one um, on the mock exams um, again a little bit um, annoying if you haven't spotted it if you just start with things like uh, root 2 plus root 3 well that's clearly irrational we can't simplify them in the same way that we did um, before and uh, but if we have uh, let's say root 2 as one of our numbers and we could have uh, for minus root 2 is another irrational number so if I add those together my irrational parts would cancel which is rational so then make the statement that it is sometimes true